One of the concepts that we need to review now that we're going into looping is the concept of an accumulator. So what is an accumulator? Well, programming has certain patterns that come up quite often. And the more you program, the more you start seeing these things that I'm doing the same thing over and over again. Accumulators are one of the most common patterns. And when you recognize a pattern, the good thing is, is that once you know how to do it, it becomes a lot easier because you can just pull from that particular pattern. Um, accumulators, appropriately enough, accumulate information in some manner. Uh, the two that we're going to cover in this class are additive and string accumulators. Additive accumulators are typically used to sum up or total numbers, while string accumulators are used to build strings by concatenating information at the end. So what does an additive accumulator require? Well, the first thing you need to have is a variable, and that variable is going to hold the total. The variable must be initialized to zero at the start of the program. This is important because, remember, Python does not know a variable exists unless you initialize it. You also need to have a loop, which iterates over the information to be accumulated. The loop iterates, for example, the information. So if we're using a variable called number, um, that, that variable, that information for that variable might be entered by the user, or it might be an existing list. The example we're going to do in here will be entered by the user. Next, you need an accumulator function, and that function has to be inside the loop. A typical approach is to use that composite equal sign. So to say, for example, total plus equals number, which if you recall is the same thing as total equals total plus number. And then lastly, note that the number's value will change each time the loop iterates. So in effect, what you're doing is you're saying, I'm going to add up these five numbers, and each time the loop runs, one of those numbers will be entered. A logical question to ask would be, do I use a for loop or do I use a while loop? Well, the answer is, it depends. Um, use a for loop when you're iterating over a specific number of times or items. Um, if you're entering, say, five numbers, then a for loop is perfect, okay? But use a while loop when the loop terminates when some condition is met. So for example, if you want to keep iterating until a certain number is entered, then that's the appropriate uh, place for a while loop. So let's take an example for a, of a for loop. For a for loop, let's say you want to enter five numbers. And again, because we're entering a specific number of numbers, that is five, uh, a for loop is the appropriate uh, structure to use. We initialize total to be zero. Our for loop is then going to iterate five times. It's going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, but remember it will never get to 5. We ask the user to enter a number. We take that number and we aggregate it to total. Remember, total starts at 0. Whatever number the user enters will then be added to total. So if they enter 42, for example, for the number, that will be added to total. Total will then have the value of 42. The for loop will iterate five times. Each time the, the iteration occurs, the user will enter a new number. That number will be to added to total. And then when the loop terminates, the total variable will, in effect, contain the total value of those numbers entered. Total, remember, total, uh, total, the variable total will hold the value as it is accumulated. The loop will iterate through the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. The user will enter the numbers one by one. The total accumulator function will, will hold the total number at that point in time each time the loop uh, occurs. And then lastly, because the print statement is outside of the for loop, the total will be printed at the very end. Okay, so that's a for loop. What about a while loop? Well, again, a while loop is perfect when you want to reach some condition. That is, something occurs to terminate the loop. The nice thing about a while loop, in contrast to a for loop, is that a while loop can run any number of times. It's up to the user to decide how many times the loop will occur. So again, we're, at the first line, we're going to contain the, the, we're going to initialize the value of total and number to be zero here. So both total and number get the value of zero. The while loop allows us to, to iterate until the total is, until the entered number rather is negative 99. So when negative 99 is entered, that's when the loop terminates. The first thing in the loop will be to, to, to aggregate. The first time through, since number is zero, total will still hold the value of zero. 
But then when we get to the next line and we ask the user to enter a number, note we tell the user that negative 99 ends the, the uh, program. The user can then enter numbers until uh, they're done, and then they can enter 90, negative 99, which will terminate. And again, the print statement is outside the loop, which will then print the total.